Wow, those lights weren't bright yesterday. Um, before we get started, I want to recognize some VIPs here. First of all, Lansing's Mayor, Mayor Andy Shore. <laughs> Deputy Mayor, Shelby Frayer. And in order of seating, uh, Commissioner David Price. <laughs> Vice Chair Sandy Zirkel. <laughs> Commissioner Deshaun Leak. <laughs> and Commissioner Tony Mullen. <laughs> All right. We better get started if I'm going to get through all 200 of these slides. A lot of companies, as they put these together, they struggle to find enough good news to offset the bad news. But I'm here today to tell you, we don't have any bad news. We have nothing but good news. And that's because of all of you folks out there. Let's talk safety. Job one, first slide here. If you look at the teal or whatever color those bar graphs are, you can see that those are the safety incident reports we receive every year. We want you to turn those in. We want that number to be where it is. If you see something, we want you to write it up. The number that I pay particular attention to is the yellow line. That is the percent of safety reports, incidents that are completed within one week. And as you can see, about five or six years ago, we completed about 50% of them. Every year, we get better. We are now up to completing almost 82%, 83% in one week of all of our safety incidents. Congratulations to everybody that's played a part in that. I encourage you, if you see something that's not safe, don't do it. And if you're nervous about reporting it, call me. I'll come out and stand beside you. <laughs> Employee engagement. We've been working with Gallup for a couple of years now, and they have really helped us work towards getting a more engaged workforce. Our last survey last year had an 85% response rate. That's unheard of in an industry that sees about 55 we had large departments that had a 100% response. That is incredible. All 15 questions had at least a 20 point gain since last year. And we didn't have a bad year last year. So this is incredible as we move to become a more engaged workforce. Gallup said less than 1% of the companies they work with see this type of results. Our overall engagement index went up to 54%. That was an 18% increase. Most companies saw a decrease last year because they're still seeing the reminiscence of COVID. Congratulations on being a more engaged workforce. <laughs> the Board of Warlight is a great place to work. Everybody wants to work here. I'll give you a couple of examples. About a month and a half ago, we posted for an administrative assistant job. 450 external applications for that job. A couple weeks ago, we posted for two CSR positions, 535 applications for that job. Now, we typically hire about 30, 35 people a year. We've hired over 100 people last year. We are going in the right direction. I believe this workforce is second to none. And I also believe that you folks are the best people out here to tell us who our future employees should be. You know who the fit is. So if you recommend a friend or family for an open position and we hire them and they're here in one year, I'll give you $1,000. Now, if they're not here, you owe me $1,000. Log on our website, look up the friends and family program, check out the details. So why do so many people want to come to the Board of Wire and Light? It's because of our strong DE&I culture. We trained over 600 employees last year on our DE&I initiatives. The top performing companies in this country are the most diverse. 
and we are right along with them. We spend tens of thousands of dollars training our employees. And what I don't want is to train them and then they feel like it's not an inclusive environment and they leave. I want company X to do the training and then we steal their employees. And we've been doing a lot of that lately. So um, keep up the good work. This graph says it all. If you look at the lower line right there, the gray line, that's the company growth over the last year, year to year. And you can see we're growing. If you look at the blue line, that's the increase in our female workforce. Make great headway there. If you look at the brown or orange line, whatever that is, that's the one we had to expand the chart for. That is our non-white employees. We are coming, becoming a diverse work group, and we set a record last year. Look at that growth. This is what it takes to be best in class, and we are. So, what does an engaged workforce bring? It brings customer satisfaction. Epic MRA did a customer survey for us about three years ago, and our residential approval rating was 86%. That's unheard of in this industry. We're the big bad utility. You gotta take our service. You gotta pay us every month. We still got an 86% satisfaction rating from our residential customers. Well, it was time to do another survey. I didn't like the timing. We were just coming out of COVID. Everybody was surly. We just had an ice storm and two other utilities around us failed miserably and I didn't want to drug into their drama, but nevertheless, we did the survey. Epic MRA came in and did it again and I patiently waited for the results, hoping are we gonna hang on to our 86% approval rating? Well, not only do we hang on to it, we blew it away. We are now 90% rated by our customers as doing a great job. Epic MRA does the survey for other utilities. Nobody is even close to having 90% approval rating. Congratulations, this is because of your work. I threw this slide in for a little bit of humor. We, during the same sur survey, we asked our customers, uh, how are we doing at tree trimming? 55% of the customers said that we are doing adequate tree trimming. I put a smile on my face. 13% said we're not doing enough. Maybe we need to go over to their house and do some more. Six years ago, nobody liked our tree trimming efforts, but we've turned the corner on that and to have 55% approval rating there, I think is very good when it comes to doing vegetation management. Great work there. Rate differential. In this very meeting four years ago, I told you that our rate differential with Consumers Energy, our nearest competitor, was eroding. There was two reasons for it. One was they changed capital gains rules and private companies got a windfall of cash. Two was we were investing in the future and nobody else was. We were spending a lot of money to make sure we're prepared for the future. That will catch up with everybody later. We will be prepared. So if you take a look at that, we dug ourselves out of the hole and now we are at a record 18% over under the rate of our nearest competitor. So if you live in the city of Lansing, your rates are 18% less than our nearest competitor. Congratulations on that. We did that by working harder, smarter, and more efficient, not by cutting corners. We still have the best reliability or near in the state of Michigan. Well, we're number two, so uh, I'll take that. I look at it as the Lansing residents are driving a Cadillac for the price of a Yugo. You younger folks will have to Google Yugo, but <laughs> we provide the best and we are very inexpensive at doing it. So where is this company headed? We have a very bright future. We'll start with water. Everybody's aware that we're ramping up to do eight miles of water main replacement a year. We used to do a mile and a half. We're up to five this year, and we're moving towards eight. Of that eight miles, I want to tell you that six miles of that water main will be installed by Board of Water and Light workers. <laughs> the other two miles, we'll work in conjunction with the city CSO project, where it makes sense to use a common workforce. Now, as we ramp up to eight miles, 
that's a $20 million a year commitment for the next 100 years. We got 800 miles of pipe, eight miles a year, and we're going to do that. It wasn't that long ago when our entire capital budget was only 40 million, and now we're committing 20 million to the water T&D side. This is a huge lift. Tearing up eight miles of street a year. The only person smiling about that is the mayor because he's getting eight miles of new roads. <laughs> but we're ready for this. We're ramping up. The amount of employees it'll take to do this, the equipment we have to buy, maintain, the supplies, the material, the PR, the education. But look around, find me another city that's even talking about replacing their water infrastructure. We're not talking about it, we've already started. Remember, first utility in the country to start removing lead service pipes? We finished second, but we're gonna be first when it comes to replacing the entire water infrastructure. We are working at it. We know how to do this, it's a big challenge, we're up for it, and we're off and running. All right, this is a picture of our brand new, soon to be shiny water tower, courtesy of the state of Michigan. This tower will serve two purposes. It's gonna be built over on Lake Lansing and Wood Street, and it will allow us to take and have high level storage so that if we have a problem with our pumping facilities, it can hold pressure on the system. Now we never have trouble, but it's always nice to have a backup. And more importantly, it will allow the water utility to fill the tower at night when electric rates are down, and during the day when rates are higher, they can draw down out of it. And that will help save our water customers money on the electric side by lowering their bill. Water utility will save money. This is a great thing to do. Now, most of the time, when you build a water tower like this, the real estate is rendered useless for anything else. You just fence it off and mow the grass under it. Not at the Board of Water and Light. The entire base of this water tower we built out as an office complex. Very innovative, think innovative thinking. I don't know who's going to go there, but uh, there will be office space there. So we're excited to do that. We're uh, happy to get funding from the state of Michigan to pay for this. And we own the property, and we're in design right now. More to come. All right, next, we are slowly beginning to look at converting our steam system to hot water. I'm tired of all the orange barrels around. We pump millions of gallons of water every day, convert it to steam, send it to the customer, they turn it back to water, and we put it down the drain. It's a terrible waste of a valuable resource. So as we look to convert to hot water, we will run a pipe that takes hot water, the customer will take and extract the heat from it, we'll get the water back on another pipe, and it just recirculates. It's cheaper to heat to water to hot than to go to steam, so the steam utility will save money there, and the customer will all easily be converted. Now, this is a big lift. We have 10 miles of steam main in town, so we will take advantage of putting piping in when we follow along the CSO projects or water main replacement. We'll get the pipe in and we'll hook it up as we have the funding. So this is exciting news for the steam utility, or should I say now, the hot water utility. New business, okay. The electric side of the company. We have done a great job of attracting people to locate in our vicinity. Businesses, customers, to live in the Lansing region. Very proud of that. But it's time now to market our energy beyond Michigan's border. Right now, we already have a future opportunity. We are months away, or maybe weeks, of signing a 20-year 50 megawatt sale with an Ohio company. To remind you what 50 megawatts is, a standard assembly plant draws about 25 megawatts. Now, we won't make the money on that contract that we do on one local here, but we don't have any exposure either. If we don't deliver, we don't get paid. This is just the beginning. Companies and cities want our energy. Utilities are getting out of the electric energy business. They want to just be a whole, buy it and resell it. They don't want the headaches that come with reduction. I want those headaches. We want to sell electric energy to anybody that wants to buy it and bring that money and jobs back to Lansing. Mm. 
All right. Well, this slide said headache before. Now it says balancing act. We're looking at increasing our production. We need to get to carbon neutrality by 2040, well ahead of anybody else. But we got to keep our product affordable. So how do you do that? Well, you do it by conducting an all-source RFP. You ask everybody in the world to chime in, tell us, how would you do this? And their mission was, I want to stay long on generation. I want to be carbon neutral by 2040. And I want to continue to have the lowest rates. Well, we were hoping to get 30 or so proposals. We got over 100 and some very good creative ideas out there. And we have narrowed down where we want to go. And so today, we're going to announce Project Dynamic. It is a 10-year, $750 million capital outlay that will spend multiple locations. This will put us on the pathway to carbon neutrality by 2040. High level, we're going to install 160 megawatts of batteries. Right now, we don't have any. Nobody has a battery array that size in the state. They're talking about it. They can keep talking. We're going to build it. We're going to add 240 megawatts of wind to our portfolio. That'll take us up to 328 megawatts. That is a tough lift. Permitting a wind farm in the state is really hard. We've done it in the past, and we're going to do it again because this wind energy is very important for us in our winter months. We're adding 260 megawatts of solar. That'll take us up to 375 megawatts of solar for the company. About 65 of that megawatts are gonna be built right here in the Lansing area. We're gonna put it on some of our vacant sites and we got some exciting news to announce coming up with the Lansing school system on where we're gonna locate some, so stay tuned. We're also gonna build 110 megawatts of rice plants out what a rice unit is, it's kind of like submarine technology. They're not made to run 24 hours a day, seven days a week, but they're made to complement your renewable portfolio. It's a mouthful. So if the wind isn't blowing or the sun isn't shining, you fire the rice engines up. You can also use those to charge your batteries when they discharge, because the batteries have about a four hour life. So it complements our renewable portfolio. And then we will also be building another combined cycle gas plant. The size and construction date for that will be announced based on our future load growth and MISO requirements. Future load is we're looking at attracting businesses, selling energy outside our area, but also electric vehicles are coming. I've had a truck in order for two years, so I don't know when it's going to get here, but a kilowatt of energy will push a vehicle three to four miles. That's a lot of kilowatts for us. I've done the math. There's a lot of energy, and they're going to get that from the Lansing Board of Water and Light when they come into this town. So we need to be ready to provide that. On the MISO requirements, right now, MISO requires us to maintain a 650 megawatt portfolio that we can deliver 650 megawatts of energy 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So we have to make sure we comply with that, and that will drive the size and the timing of the next combined cycle gas plant. So I want to talk about the batteries for just a second. The governor's My Healthy Climate Plan calls for 1,000 megawatts of batteries by 2025. We're going to supply 16% of that portfolio. And keep in mind, we're only 6% of the state's energy. We are going way above what any other company has to do. Timeline. Let's look at the timeline. All right, 40 megawatts of batteries will be installed out at the DEP site as soon as we can get to permitting. We're going to put 10 megawatts of solar on the site. That's all that there's room for right now. And then we'll start construction on the 110 megawatts of rice units as soon as we can get permitting for that as well. At the same time, we are looking to procure other land in Lansing for the second site to build out the balance of our portfolio. So that's some very exciting news. This project is the biggest project the Border on Light has ever undertaken. And it's all gonna to come to fruition because of your help. All right, we got a two minute video that we're going to watch and it's what the future site of DEP will look like. So I turn it over for the video. Enjoy.
This is your future. Two more items and it'll be lunchtime. One is I'd like to announce our safety award winners for today. First, Steve Perry. And I don't, Steve's a shift worker, so I'm not sure if he got up or not, if he's out there. Uh, is he? Steve is here? Uh, all right, well, Steve is getting this award for working with management to improve safety and keeping a good working environment. And then Adam Young, and I saw Adam wandering around. So, uh, Adam's uh, getting this uh, for exceeding expectations as a new supervisor and doing all the safety things before or as soon as safety asks. Congratulations, and you're going to receive a really cool grill. Very cool. All right, last item. This is... A 40 second presentation you'll see that nobody's seen but one person in a company. So the way this works for this presentation, it starts with a bunch of stickies on my desk. And then my executive team does a great job helping me get around it. But I held one sticky back. And boy, if you want to look at the terror in their eyes right now, what's he going to do next? <laughs> this is priceless. We have worked for 10 years to rebuild and build new facilities so that when you come to work, you can have a sense of pride as you drive by our facilities. And as our owners and our residents come by, they know this is a first class operation. Well, we got one facility left to build, and that's this one. We've outgrown it, we've outlived it. So I have a vision, and it'll take time to put that vision together. Um, Got to buy the land, and I'm going to instruct the individual procuring the land for us to make sure he procures enough land to locate a replacement for this facility. So, I give you my vision for the Penn Hazel replacement. Well, what do you think? What do you think? Huh? <laughs> Well, we're going to get started on it. Uh, you know, we got to buy land, we got to get money, we got to do it, but you've seen it. I tend to get what I want, so <laughs> this is something near and dear to my heart so we can finish off having a first class operation from top to bottom. So with that, it is a pleasure and an honor to lead this company. You are the best. Have a great lunch. Thank you very much.